So now at this stage, I create a do while loop. So do this while so and so thing is happening. Let me just scroll down. And this is the stuff we're going to look at next. So now what we do is, now that we're listening in on that port, I say socket underscore accept. Accept means that if somebody actually comes to this particular socket requesting to get some information from us, accept them. Okay, and which socket are we listening in on? We have to give that resource. Okay, so we give them this, and then we get back the particular person, well, actually a machine or person connecting to us, and we get a reference, a resource handle to them. At this point, I display a message, new connection with a client has been established. Then we move on, I say, I'm saving this into the variable, and I'm saying, hey, welcome to another existing exciting talk. And then we use another function called socket underscore write, because we're going to write this message onto this client who is just connected to us onto their screen. So the first argument is, of course, the client resource the so that we're connecting to. And then the message that we're sending to them. And then strlen is the length of that message. So these are the arguments that we're passing in and socket write will now go and write to their screen the message that we just sent and now we move on to the second do while one question one thing I forgot to explain is why I did this inside of a loop reason is because you're listening in and you're hoping somebody will accept this uh, we're, we're already listening in and we want to accept any one that tries to connect to us there might be more than one people trying to connect to us so that's why the do is there the next thing is, after we write something to the screen, we jump to this part, which is check for any messages sent by the user to us. Now we're actually getting to the part of reading messages, socket underscore read. We're reading messages sent by users to us. And the arguments for that is, the client resource, again, we're listening to clients because we're reading, and we give that resource handle. We say that the message shouldn't be any longer than this. And PHP normal read is a defined constant which says when the person hits enter, that's bring me all the messages up to that point. Otherwise, if they just keep typing, there's other methods, but PHP normal read means when they hit enter, bring all the message up to that point to me. So that's what socket read does. And we get back the client message that they have just sent to us. So we keep reading until we get to the enter hit and then we get that message. If there's a problem we throw an error. Now again we're inside of a, another, another do while because we're going to keep listening to any messages that are keep, was sent to us. We can keep going in this way. Now we show up here and we say I in a variable I write down thanks for your input we'll think about it. It's because we're going to send him back a message. Here's socket underscore write again. Here's a resource to the client that I'm going to send this message to the actual message and then the length of that message using str at the end. Now was it actually words? Now here's the message that we got from the client. I'm going to start looking into it. First I'm going to trim this thing for any extra spaces that are in there. And then what I'm going to look for is if this guy just gave us some blank space and there was an, an actual message there, we're just going to continue in this do, lo do loop and keep listening for an actual message. Otherwise if he sent us the message of close, he wants to terminate the connection with us. Okay, so we can actually close the socket. Socket underscore close means destroy the socket connection we have with this client, this particular person. So now we close that socket and then we print this message on our screen. Notice the echo. We didn't say socket right, we said echo. We spent this on this message, we say the user has left the connection. So we have an information. Now break, and you might notice the two number here. For those of you that don't know, uh, we, were, we initially created one do while loop, then we went into a second do while loop. So in order to break out of both of these do while loops, you just give the number two. You say break out of both of these loops, and then we'll be breaking out of both of these loops. So initially we created the first loop so we could accept as many connections as possible, and then we created the second loop so we could read as many messages that are sent to us. That's why we had the two loops. And then we broke out of two loops. And then in the end, I write down end the socket, ending the socket, and then I close the actual socket that I created on my server. Lastly, 
here's the short arrow function in this function what I'm doing is I'm saying socket notice how it begins with socket last error last error actually gives you and I'm passing in the socket uh, let me just show you here where's the error message whenever I was calling show error oops made a mistake there okay this is what I should have been doing at this stage in the process socket wasn't created was it so I, I call show error without an argument but in this case the socket has been created so I'm going to take this and pass it in as an argument. Why am I going to do that? Look at this error message. Uh, socket underscore last error. This is going to return the last error code, the last error that occurred on the server. If I pass in the actual socket, it's more specific. It will look for any errors that occurred for this socket, which is much more, which is much more better. There's more than one socket on the server. You want to make sure you get the right one. But in the first step, if you look at it, the first step, we don't have a socket created, a socket resource. So we just call the show error without the argument. In the second step, we actually have the socket created. So we call show error with the socket. He passes in that socket, and we call the PHP function socket last error. It throws us the error code. Then we say, okay, we want the actual message for it. So socket underscore str string error. We pass in the error code, it gives back us a string message. And we can give a more formal error and die. Well, not us, but the script. Now, one thing I want to mention at this point is we've created our daemon or our service. And if you notice at the beginning of it, we created the resource handle and the socket was binded. So the socket was created, then we went on down, or more downward towards the screen and we define the service that we're going to give this guy. In this particular case, we're not actually providing a big service. We're just saying hello and goodbye. But you can give him much more information like chat app chatting applications and all that other stuff. I didn't create that here because the sole purpose of this application or this tutorial was just to show you all these PHP functions and how they operate. And you can even try this out on your own local system. So once this is created, what we're going to do next is run it. How do we run this? Again, this is a service. This is not a regular PHP page that we're talking about. So in order to run this, where is this one? Okay, so in order to run this, we go to the command prompt. Okay, I go to run. I type in cmd. I get this command prompt. I say cd, oops, cd, ht, docs, and it's in live chat. No, it's in socket. I go to my directory, and here's the file I'm looking for server. This is my daemon. This is my service. And I can just say php server.php. When I hit enter, notice what's saying. The socket's protocol info was set, meaning it first created this resource then it bound it to a specific port now it's binded and now it's listening in for anybody that wants to connect to our server on this particular socket this code that we wrote in the background has now been activated this service daemon and we've activated using the command line so CLI now we're going to create another CMD and we're going to connect to this guy using telnet and let me just go here I'm going to say telnet to localhost and I used port 123 right so I use telnet the localhost which is the server and then I give the port number so let's connect to this socket I hit enter first it's connecting and now it gives me the message remember I wrote that down somewhere in the back I said hey welcome to another exciting talk And if I go here to where my daemon is running my service it says a uh, new connection with the client established now I'm going to type something interesting here. Uh, I'm going to type in close. Remember, when someone types in close, they mean they want to just disconnect from our socket. I'm going to hit enter. It says, thanks for your input. We'll think about it. Connection to host lost. You come back here after the connection was established. You notice that it prints the message. The user has left the connection, ending the socket. So I'm going to just exit out of this later. So now you understand how 
it's happening in the background, the socket functions that are being used. And that was the purpose of this. In the future, I'm going to actually be, let me go here, using the ratchet library, which makes things much more simpler. How does it make things much more simpler? Let me show you. Uh, in the beginning, you'll notice that it's very simple to cr uh, call one function to create a protocol, a socket resource, and then say bind it to a specific port, and then say listen. Okay, so that's very simple. Look, you don't need a library for that. But here's where you do need the library. Let's say you're creating a chatting application where not just one person is trying to connect, not just one client is connecting to a chat room, but you have 20, 30, 40, however many. You have to actually save these resources where, in my case, if the second person had logged in, this client resource would have been overwritten, meaning my current service doesn't support more than one client. But with Ratchet, it's much more simple because they're using the SCT object with that PHP offers. They, they manage this much more efficiently. So all you're doing is calling simple functions that take care of all this hectic for you. So you don't have to worry about this do while loop. They actually do that for you. You can do writing, not just to one client, to all the clients that are connected, whether 80 or just one. Uh, the second thing that the library does for you is from here up to here. It actually does all this for you with one function call. And you don't even have to remember it. So that's why that library is great, but it's also, as I've said repeatedly, important to understand what's happening in the background so you can actually create something interesting or even debug with a sense of what's going on so hopefully in the next one I'll create something on uh, the ratchet library and uh, we'll create a chat room and all the other exciting stuff if you want all the code that you've seen on my site uh, my tutorial scroll all the way down to where it says the whole daemon service and here it is uh, leave me a comment let's see what you have to say about it okay Take care.